So President Obama gave the speech that we were all fearing on Saturday. He decided to pull the trigger, and he now says we are going to Syria. He also added the caveat that he would be going to Congress for approval before we go to Syria, uh, which set up a situation in the media that is flat out laughable. So uh, the progressive position is typically the anti-war position, and you know, we say, we're against using the military unless there's an imminent threat against the nation, and then in that case we would attack for self-defense. That seems to be the common sense position, the anti-war position, right? Uh, but now, all of a sudden, that's not the case. Now, the only two sides of the debate you hear are the Republicans who say that President Obama should not be weak and he should attack Syria without getting congressional approval, and the liberal position is now Oh, well, of course, you get congressional approval, and then you bomb the shit out of Syria. So the two positions are both pro-war, and the anti-war position has now been totally drowned out. So uh, going on right now as I'm talking to you guys is also the uh, hearing on this for Congress. So John Kerry came out and gave uh, a statement. Senator Menendez was the head of the committee. Listen to his quote. He said, this is not a declaration of war. This is a declaration of our values to the world. Well, then I guess our values are war, because this is a declaration of war, quite uh, plainly, very clear and straightforward. So Menendez is for it. Uh, John Kerry, of course, has become the biggest war hawk. Uh, my nickname for him is John Dick Cheney Kerry now. And uh, when you look at the polls, even after this tremendous propaganda campaign, only 32% of the American people think Obama explained clearly uh, why we should go to Syria. That's according to a Pew poll. 59% uh, say they are against the airstrikes. So even after all of the massive amounts of propaganda, and the mainstream media has been hammering away as well, and we'll get to that a little later, uh, it's still not a majority uh, popular position. So one of the uh, responses that we get is, well, you know what, it's good for humanitarian reasons. They talked about how chemical weapons are a red line, so it's a red line and we should act accordingly. Yeah, but then we'd have to also invade Israel, because Israel used white phosphorus against the Palestinians, and we haven't done anything about it. We haven't discussed invading Israel. In fact, we're still buddy-buddy with Israel, and they're our allies. We haven't thought for a second to punish them. They get to use chemical weapons because they're our buddies. So as long as you're our buddy, that's all that matters. Uh, you know who else we'd have to invade if we were serious about uh, enforcing this red line on chemical weapons? Ourselves. Why do I say that? Because according to recently declassified CIA documents, we just learned that the United States in 1988 uh, gave Saddam Hussein chemical weapons and then told him the coordinates on the map to attack Iran with those chemical weapons, with mustard gas and sarin gas. Sarin gas is the same weapons uh, that were used in Syria. But are we going to invade ourselves? Not even a consideration, of course. That would be absurd. That'd be ridiculous. So we're allowed to go around the world and do whatever we want to do, even if it's in violation of the Nuremberg Tribunals and the Geneva Convention and international law. Israel's allowed to do it because they're our buddy. Only uh, we can selectively pick uh, who we want to enforce the red line for. And also, by the way, there are reports. There was a UN report that says Assad likely used uh, chemical weapons. But not just Assad. There were also reports from a few months ago that said the rebels used chemical weapons as well. So what are we going to do? Are we going to invade and uh, attack both sides? We go after Assad and the rebels? Oh, that's right. We're not uh, talking about that. We're only talking about getting Assad. Weird. Weird how that works. And of course, uh, the other point, which is being completely left out, but which is, uh, in my opinion, one of the biggest points, is uh, Al-Qaeda. Now, if we attack Assad, we are on the side of Al-Qaeda. Now, I'm not saying Assad's a good guy. He's a dictator. He's backed by Hezbollah, which is the militant Shia group uh, from Lebanon. But Al-Qaeda's not good guys either. In fact, they are, uh, by according to some reports, the largest rebel faction that there is. They're even bigger than the Free Syrian Army. So what do we want to actually fight on the side of Al-Qaeda? And as a result of this, there's been people in our own military that are posting pictures on the internet, on Facebook. They're in their uh, military outfits holding up signs that say, 
I didn't join the military to fight on the side of Al-Qaeda. And I don't blame these guys. I don't blame them at all. In fact, I would be holding up the same side. Now, some people, it's comical. Some people are like, yeah, well, those pictures are fake. Oh, really? Is that so? Oh, okay. Why is that? Well, you see, on one of the pictures, there was this shade of blue that was, like, not as, as blue as what the real uh, things look like. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no, uh, you made that up. And by the way, there's hundreds of pictures. Your contention is that every single one of them is fake? I don't buy that for a second. And by the way, I think those guys are right. Now, don't get me wrong, a lot of this, uh, you know, people who are objecting to this are Tea Party people. And honestly, I don't even care if the main reason they're against intervention in Syria is because it's coming from Obama and they're knee-jerk against anything Obama does. As long as you're on the right side, I don't care how you got there. Just be on the right side. And of course, uh, the fact that, oh, it's a humanitarian disaster, we should jump in, we should help. Really, that's interesting. So uh, why did we not even consider going to Darfur? That was a humanitarian disaster. Wasn't even on our agenda, wasn't even on our radar. Or how about uh, invading Mali? Al-Qaeda has basically taken over Mali, killed civilians, everything. We haven't even considered going there. In fact, France is fighting a war against Al-Qaeda there. Or how about going to the Congo? Millions of people dead, slaughtered. Didn't even bring it up, didn't even come on our radar. How about Rwanda, North Korea, Burma, which had a dictator for uh, generations now. And nope, didn't even uh, bring it up, didn't even cross our mind. You know, I'm starting to think maybe the reasons that the U.S. government gives uh, for invading Syria or for attacking Syria, bombing Syria, which is what they're discussing now, maybe it's all bullshit. Look, uh, the reality as to why we want to do it is imperialist ambitions. We want to control a vital region in the Middle East. We want to get our hands on more natural resources. We want to snub Iran because Iran is buddy-buddy with Syria. We have beef with them going back to pre-1953 when we overthrew their democratically elected government and propped up the Shah. Don't fall for the propaganda. Don't fall for the bullshit. The common sense position is we only use the military when the United States is in imminent danger and it's to defend ourselves.